Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 14.1 and 14.2, Graphing Trigonometric Functions. And this is the introduction. Why graph? That's a good question. There's a lot of different answers. The biggest one is help us visualize. Um, we're going to end up curves doing this sort of thing, just like ocean waves. And it helps us visualize how daylight, you know, decreases during the winter and then increases during the summer and things like that. It's a good question. We'll see when we get to modeling how handy it can be. Um, how did you originally graph something? Well, you used a, a T-chart usually, and you just started throwing points up and praying where they went. Well, let's do sine. And instead of x and y, we'll do theta and y. And I'll put a tiny little unit circle here, and we'll pick out a few spots label our points. And we're looking for sines. We're looking for the y value. And we're doing it with theta. So we're doing degrees. This, uh, pardon me, radians. So this is 0. And we'll use pi over 4, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So the question is, what does y equal at 0 degrees? or zero radians. The answer is zero. At pi over four, it's root two over two, but we're trying to plot it, so we need a number. We're going to go with 0.71. At, pardon me, that was pi over four. At pi over two, it's at one. At pi, it's zero. At three pi over two, it's negative one. And at two pi, it's back where we started. It's at zero. That's important. We'll come back to that later. I'm going to do this literally a dozen times. So, Bear with me. If we go from 1 down to negative 1, that's as high and as low as it gets. And we traverse from 0 to 2 pi. Half of 2 pi is pi. Half again is pi over 2. 1 pi over 2. 2 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And there's a method to that madness, but you won't see it till we get there. And we start at 0, 0. We go up to about 0.7 at pi over 4, but I'm never going to use this point again, so I'm going to erase it. I'll leave the point itself. And the top limit, like I said, is 1, so I like to dot that in just so I know it's a limit. And the curve is going to go in here somewhere. And at pi over 2, looking at the chart, it goes up to 1. At pi, it's at 0. At 3 pi over 2, it's at negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's 0. And that's what the curve looks like. That's the sine curve. Notice, I don't repeat it. I mean, I could keep going on and on here, or on and on here, but I don't, because it just repeats. It has a period, which in physics is labeled as t, of 2 pi. I'm just going to label it as period. 2 pi meaning it repeats every 2 pi, which it has to. It's a unit circle. It gets back to the beginning. It's got to repeat. It might repeat a little bit faster like tangent does, but it doesn't in this case. Same process for cosine. Goes up to 1, goes down to 1, negative 1. Dot them in. Put your four tick marks, label them. 2 pi is the period, half of that is pi, half of that again is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Cosine starts at 1, heads down until it gets to negative 1 at pi, and then it heads back up. And that's y equals cosine of theta. Or you could write it as cosine of x. It doesn't really matter. It's just a variable. We usually use theta just because we're dealing with angles and we like to be precise. Now, that's nice. Hey, there's sine. Don't write this down. There's cosine. Great, we're done. Yeah. Of course, it's math. I mean, it's our mission to make your life harder. What happens with the two out front? 
Well, the two is called the amplitude. And it's how far up and down we go. So I've been making my dotted lines, and I've been doing it so I can keep track of everything. Four tick marks, because the period hasn't changed. Period equals 2 pi. Start at the top and head on down. Two pi, pi, pi over two, three pi over two. That's it. Notice the graph looks exactly the same. I know we're cheating. We're scheming, I suppose I should say. We are changing the scale. Rather than trying to fit a graph on the exact same plot, we just change the scale on our plots. You know, all we're doing is trying to understand what happens? So I put a two out front, it gets twice as big top to bottom. We just mentioned we call that the amplitude. The amplitude's always positive. Because the amplitude means how far up to and how far down to from the midline do we go. That's all it means. And by the way, I could put tables together and let you guys play with this for ages, but it's a lot of graphing. You gotta get on top of it fast. Now another one where I'll just change the scale. The amplitude is always positive. One half. Period hasn't changed. Two pi. So let's just set it up and down from one half. Two pi, pi. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. A lot of people say, oh, that's easy. I'll just memorize it. Well, that's going to change soon. What about this? It flips it over the midline, the negative. So cosine used to start and do this. Flip it over the midline, it's going to go down here. There you go. We've halved the amplitude. It's come down half, but looks exactly the same because I just messed with the scale. So what if I put a 3 out at the end? Amplitude, in this case, is 4. Period hasn't changed to pi. It will change. I'll tell you when. Not yet. What the heck is VS? It's a vertical shift. It means we're going to go up. to 3 to start. This is now our midline. From there, we know the amplitude is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We go up to 7. And 1, 2, count the 0, 3, 4, down to negative 1. So now we know the curve is going to be in there somewhere. Still four tick marks. 1, 2, Four, still the same period, so we label it. And now we graph. Sign starts in the middle, should go up. However, it's negative, so it's going to go down. And that's y equals negative 4 sine of x plus 3. I've given you one to do on your own. I would pause the recording and give it a shot. I will tell you the one thing that I put the plus one out front just to mess with this, see who's paying attention. 
because I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to be fairly quick about it. Amplitude is 5, period is 2 pi, vertical shift is 1. Cosine starts at the top, there's no negative. And oops, I forgot to label my... four tick marks, that's it. Good luck. You have uh, six problems. You should start them as soon as possible on the next page. Hope it works out.